Hi. Uh, I I should apparently uh, talk to the all of you nice people in the room uh, rather than rather than having one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations. Uh, it's the more scalable way to uh, to do a talk. Um, apparently, the non-scalable way to do the talk is to do it one at a time. Um, so uh, so thanks for uh, for breaking off from coffee and coming in here to to hear me babble about things. Um, I'm here to talk to you about uh, Stackforge. Um, uh, which is, uh, I think I've even got a slide about what it is. Um, uh, but it's a way for you to run your development operations in uh, our OpenStack infrastructure. Um, real quick, just on the off chance none of you know what OpenStack is, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's open source cloud software. Turns out we use these slides in other places sometimes. Um, uh, but it, it, it is, it is uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's OpenStack, okay, you know that. Um, uh, for and this is actually relevant to the talk. Um, there's a lot of projects in OpenStack. Um, uh, these are these are a list of uh, of all of the ones that the project has given. This is a list of most of the ones that the project they're they're missing. There's actually projects missing here that the project has given some official status to. Um, not even getting into the the unofficial ones that what we're going to be talking about here. Uh, uh, and and this, you know stuff like that Alex was talking about earlier on. These are just ones that the project has said, "Yep, yep, that's a good idea. We want to work on that." We somehow I've left Savannah off of this list, and I'm sorry about that. Uh, not not anything personal, uh, not intentional. Um, the thing is, is that developing this many projects uh, is is kind of hard. It's also hard to uh, to do that many projects when you have um, as many contributors as we have, um, and not just as many contributors as we have but as many varied contributors as we have. We, have. we actually do have some unaffiliated individuals. We don't have many unaffiliated individuals, but we do have some. I believe Julian is still technically unaffiliated. No, he's affiliated now? When did that happen? Oh, well, that's not important. Um, yeah. Uh, somebody in there is unaffiliated. I think Paul Ballinger is, is unaffiliated. Uh, anyway, uh, we, have, uh, we have people working for, for commercial entities, you know, companies, nonprofits. We have people working for governments. Uh, and the, the number of those, the quality of those uh, changes daily. We have a, a bunch of companies that are getting involved that hire a whole bunch of people, and these are people who potentially have never done open source software before, people who've never done Python before, uh, and now they've been told by their company, um, this is sort of the new face of open source, right? It used to be some guys in a, in a, in a bedroom, in their pajamas, you know, hopefully in their pajamas, um, <laughs> writing, writing some code in their off time, and now it's people getting getting employed, not even because they're interested in the open source project, just normal corporate developers being assigned to work on open source projects, right? So they have, they have no internal vested interest, uh, and then you still have, you know, your, your normal open source rock star -y type people. Uh, and we gotta, we've, we've got to take contributions for all, all of those folks. One of the ways that we, that we decided to deal with that uh, is, is to build a whole bunch of, of, uh, of tooling. Um, and specifically to build uh, consistent tooling across those projects. All of those projects work exactly the same, um, for better or for worse. Uh, I'm not going to say that the libraries that I've written to do that are perfect, um, although I do like them since I wrote them. Um, but uh, but the, the idea is that, that all, of our, all of our projects use them, and so you can, make, you can make assumptions about how they operate, you can make assumptions about how they build, um, uh, and, and things of that nature, so that as we add them into a continuous integration system, an automated testing system, uh, we, can, um, uh, we, can, we can do that in a, in a way that scales to our current numbers, which is 1,800 developers and four people running the CI uh, developer infrastructure and build systems. Um, that's not a very good ratio, and if any of you have any full-time employees that you'd like to put on working on project infrastructure, I, uh, I will buy you a beer. Um, because uh, that's a good trade. You give me a full-time employee, I give you a beer. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, this, is, this is really good for people. It, it means that we don't waste developer time with people uh, messing around with uh, trying to rethink how, how build systems work. That's what I do. Um, uh, it means that if you work on one of the projects, you can work on any of the projects. They all, they all operate in, in the same way. Um, uh, and and we, can, we can develop consolidated tools like the ones I'm going to talk about here. Um, uh, and, and also it means that for the most part, uh, unless we're talking about uh, Horizon, we can uh, minimize project-specific weird build crud. Uh, Horizon is the only Django project we have, so it's an outlier anyway, so it's, it, 
it's going to be different. Uh, it turns out things are different when they need to be, but not just different because somebody has a random different opinion. That's not actually helpful uh, to people. So we have a lot of tools for doing this. This is um, a, a actually not entirely complete list of all of the services that uh, the OpenStack infrastructure team runs for the OpenStack project. Um, these things all integrate with each other, uh, and, and we do all of the running of these is all done through uh, through Git, through source code repositories. It's all open. Uh, anyone in this room can go and uh, immediately, right now, uh, work on the, the running and management of these. Uh, f there's only very few tasks that we have at this point that require somebody to have root access uh, to the project infrastructure. So we run the project infrastructure as an open source project itself. Um, it turns out it's a complicated open source project <laughs> because that's apparently what we like to give birth to in the OpenStack world. Uh, it's very, very large, very complicated open source projects. Um, uh, in general, uh, just for those of you who, who don't know, um, uh, uh, OpenStack uh, is in Python. Uh, it, is, it is absolutely in Python, um, unless, I mean, we've always said this, uh, if you are working on a project uh, that you would like to be part of OpenStack and it needs to be in something else uh, other than Python, we can talk about that. Like, there's been discussions of rewriting some parts of, of Keystone and C uh, because it, it might make for a, a, a more efficient thing. Um, but, but really only for actual specific technical reasons, not just because you happen to write it in something else, not because you happen to like Ruby better, not because Go is cool and you want to grow a really big beard. Um, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 because we have 1,600 developers, uh, we, we kind of we need to keep the crazy down. Um, we, in fact, we, inf what's that? I know, right? What's that about? Um, uh, we, we go so far, in fact, as to say not only is it Python, but it has to, it has to be compliant with uh, coding styles because, again, 1,600 developers. If everybody has their own opinions on where commas go, it just everything goes to crap. Um, uh, and so we enforce that um, uh, with tooling. Um, we do things in virtual environments. A lot of that stuff is actually just, this is sort of give you an, an, a context of what it is that we're uh, talking about that you can get your hands on. There's another thing called DevStack that people wrote because we're writing cloud software. Um, and it turns out that to locally dev and test that, you kind of have to be able to run it, uh, and running a cloud is hard. Um, uh, and so DevStack is a collection of shell scripts that will actually install OpenStack on a, on a local, uh, local machine. Uh, I highly suggest not ever running DevStack on your laptop, not in a VM, um, because it will destroy your laptop. Um, like, smoke will come out of it, like, demons will punch you in the face, uh, and you probably won't be able to use your laptop for anything useful after that. Uh, so spin up a VM, run it in there. Um, uh, and that's actually the basis of some of the things we do. We, uh, in, in our systems uh, that, that Sackforge takes a part of, um, we run lots of tests on things. We found, basically, that if it's not tested, it's broken. Uh, sort of our, our new motto. Um, and so we, we run tests every time you submit a, a new change into the code review system. Uh, we also, once again, run tests on it once somebody has approved your change because it turns out there's different contexts uh, in which the first time we're testing it so that we're not wasting uh, developer time reviewing your patch if it doesn't work in the first place. But actually, we don't care about your patch. We do. We like you. You're special. Um, but uh, what we actually care about at the end of the day is the effect of your patch on the tree. Um, and that is different than your patch as it was when you wrote it because we have, again, how many 1,600 developers? Uh, they write a lot of patches. Um, so the, the code has almost certainly moved on from the state that it was in uh, when you wrote your patch. Um, so we do this. We call this project gating. Um, and we do it to ensure, uh, to ensure code quality. Uh, but we, it's not just about the code quality itself. It also protects the developers from each other. Um, it means that when you grab the code um, to start working on your patch, you can be assured that the code works so that if something breaks, it's your patch's fault. It's not the fault of something that was laying there from, from three months ago. Um, uh, we, uh, it, it, uh, like I said, it does the code quality. It also means this is, this is enforced by, by automation. This is the same for everybody. I have been around the project for a long time, uh, and I don't get to skip this. I actually have root access in the project, and I don't get to skip this. Um, uh, it, it, it's, it's, if you're the first time contributor, or if you've been doing this for three years, um, you, you upload your code in the code review system, and you have to be code reviewed by other people. You can't land your own patches, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and, and we do that to keep 
uh, to keep the playing field uh, level. If you're in the in the previous panel discussion, I was sort of mentioning a little bit about that. This is one of the ways that we that we ensure that some random uh, you know company doesn't become too much of a power player and just start taking things over. Um, is that we make everybody play by the rules at all time, um, and it's it's really helpful. Uh, we we automate everything because, like I said, there's four of us and there's. 1,600 developers. Um, so if it's not if it's not automated, we we can't handle it. Um, and so this is this is a, a a view of the um the status page of of the Zool system that we use to do that. I'll talk about that in a little bit of a second. Uh, the process goes a little bit like this. Um, you grab it's a it's a cycle, of course, because you're you're going to write more than one just one patch. Uh, you're gonna you're gonna clone the. Uh, clone the software locally. You're gonna you're gonna make your changes. Uh, your wonderful, wonderful changes. Uh, and of course, you're going to run unit tests locally because everyone runs tests locally. I probably don't run tests locally. I'm a bad person. Um, you're gonna run tests locally, uh, and then you're gonna run the git, git review command, and you're gonna submit it to our Garrett review server. Uh, at that point, there's gonna be uh, some cycles of testing. Um, you're gonna get code reviews. If those code reviews don't like you, you're going to amend your commit and resubmit it. Uh, this is a little bit different than any of you that are used to the uh, uh, reasonably popular system that you might have heard of called GitHub, um, where if people don't like your pull request, you'll just make a new commit and add it to that and push it uh, to amend the, the pull request. Um, we, we like for our, our tree histories to be clean, and so when we land a patch, we would like for that patch to work. Um, uh, and so, so it's, it's a little bit different. It's actually a little bit closer to the Linux kernel uh, email style. Uh, if you actually, if you actually sort of dig into the into the thinking there, uh, but in any case, then then it automated tests again, and if the tests land, and only if the tests pass, uh, the patch will land uh, onto the tree, and uh, work can continue. Um, as I mentioned, uh, as already has been referenced, uh, the sort of one of the key pieces in the middle of this is a system called Garrett, which was developed by Google for the Android for developing the Android project. Don't know if you've heard of that one. It's also a really large open source project that has lots of vendors <laughs> involved in it, um, including the people that wrote my phone. Um, uh, it is a, it's a patch review system that has Git repositories integrated in with it. So you, you get things into the Git repository through the code review system. Uh, it has a whole bunch of interesting integration points. It's got hooks, which we use, but not a lot. Uh, it's got a really interesting uh, event stream, um, uh, which has a one of the more fascinating interfaces, which is that it runs a virtual SSH server, and you run a, a, a command on that, and it just streams JSON into your, into your terminal, um, which you can use for automation. Um, uh, and then it's got a whole bunch of extensive review categories, which is a little bit uh, out of scope for this talk. Um, this is a view of our Garrett. Uh, in a, hopefully a few weeks, this will look vastly different, because we're working on upgrading to Garrett 2.8 which has a weird looking user interface and we're gonna have to do some work to make that look not like uh, weird, but uh, uh, this, is, this is sort of what it looks like now. You've got a change, you've got a sort of a, a matrix of you can see who's reviewed this change, what they've thought about it. Uh, if you scrolled down a little bit on this page, you'd, you'd see their comments um, uh, and, and a whole bunch of other information. Um, I, I mentioned this earlier as well. Uh, we wrote a, so it, if you wanted to uh, submit your code to a Garrett system um, without any help, uh, you, you, there's special push commands. So uh, you would, for instance, type uh, git push Garrett, uh, all caps head, colon, refs slash four slash, and then the name of the branch that you're going to submit the change to. Uh, this is a lot of typing. I don't like typing things. Um, uh, and it's also pretty confusing to, to folks who are coming into the project who may not have any background or anything. So we wrote a, a command called git review, uh, which is really easy. You type git review, uh, and it will do the appropriate git commands to push the, the changes up into the code review system. Uh, and it will uh, very, uh, give you a nice friendly URL that you can see, which is where your, uh, where your code review wound up. Um, so in this case, uh, uh, this is someone uh, uh, looks like uh, Jim uh, fixing something about uh, version.py on Glance um, and, uh, and then submitting that to, uh, oh, sorry, basing Neutron's uh, version.py on the Glance version.py. This is also an extremely, extremely old patch. We are now above six, uh, 60,000 uh, in our Garrett system, and this was the 3,000th patch to have been uploaded. So this is a really, really old um, thing uh, in our terms, which means that was, what, a couple months ago. Um, Anyway, uh, 
So, so that's all great. So those, that's a set of the tools that we've got. Um, but uh, as I mentioned earlier, we've got all of that, that big list of projects. Uh, and we really need to integration test those together. Uh, which means that we need to we need to to test the combination of of all of those repos um, with each other, uh, and so we wrote a thing called DevStack Gate, which um, basically for each change boots a completely fresh new machine in an OpenStack cloud, runs DevStack in that new machine, runs the integration tests, so it, it takes all of the uh, it takes all of the the current uh, the current tips of all of the all of the projects plus the proposed change that you've got in the code review system, combines all of those, runs DevStack with that combination of repo states, uh, runs the integration tests against it, and then when it's done, it deletes the server. Um, we do this sometimes 10,000 times a day. Uh, so thankfully, I can tell you that OpenStack works really well, because we do that in OpenStack clouds. Um, uh, but so that's the general problem. Uh, if, if you connect the dots really quickly, you'll, you'll probably notice that um, it's, uh, if, if, we, if one wants to test the state that applying a patch to the tree is going to produce, there's really only one way to do that correctly, and that is serially uh, across all of the projects. Um, that quickly doesn't scale. Um, uh, so uh, for, for a few reasons, oh, sorry, there's, I, I'm skipping a whole slide. Um, there's, there's, a few, there's several problems that this whole system has that we have to solve. One of them is that tests are slow. This is where the, the not scaling thing comes in. One of them is that cloud APIs can fail. Oh, well. Um, and, uh, and also, external services are unreliable. If you ever tried to run tests against something that's in GitHub 10,000 times in a day, you'll notice that the, that the failure rate is, uh, well, it's not zero. Um, so, uh, so the way that this, this actually works is we keep a, a pool of, of pre-created nodes. Um, we, create, we create a node, basically we prefetch everything that it's ever going to need from the internets, uh, and, and we, we store them, we store it locally. We don't necessarily install those things, but we, we cache them locally. Uh, then we snap, snapshot that to a cloud image, and then we made a, make a pool, of images a pool of nodes based on that image. Um, we update those images, uh, uh, base images from, from time to time. Uh, and then we use each of those nodes one and only one time. Um, because once you've installed a cloud on an image, uh, it's probably been hosed. Uh, and there's no way that you can tell anything about state. But also it's a cloud, so you just delete it and you make another one. It's great. Um, uh, so uh, in general, I, I mentioned that doing this serially is a problem. Um, uh, so we wrote a thing that lets us keep the serial state and execute things in parallel uh, using optimistic branch prediction from, uh, from processor design. Uh, so pipelining, as it were. Um, uh, and, and so what this does is, is keeps a, a virtual serial queue of all of the changes in the order that they are approved, uh, and it, uh, it then tests them uh, in, in parallel as if the changes ahead of them in the queue would have passed. Um, uh, it, uh, if then one of them fails, um, it, will, it will kick that one out and restart the, the, um, the jobs that are at that point uh, uh, from, from that point in the queue. Um, if that didn't necessarily make a whole lot of sense uh, up front, um, here's a quick demonstration of that. Um, so in this case, we have a change approved to Nova, a change approved to Nova, a change approved to Keystone, and a change approved to Nova. Uh, and so what we're gonna do is we're going to assume in that order that that's how we're going to land them, and we're gonna start running tests uh, on all of them in parallel. So in this case, we're spinning up the bazillion uh, cloud nodes and running DevStack on them, and the first two changes pass, um, and so we're going to, uh, uh, and, and then the third one fails and the fourth one fails. So in, the, in, in this case, the third one failed. So we know that the fourth, we don't necessarily know anything about the state of the fourth patch, right? Because it could have failed because the third patch failed, or it could fail because it, it's terrible. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to take the third patch and we're gonna move it to the side. Um, not, we're not just going to cancel it because we might want to get some information about its failure in our, in our logging system so that developers can figure out what went wrong with it. But we also don't want to wait for that to be done for us to do something with the next patch. Uh, so it's going to sit there and run over the side and not care about it. Now we're going we're gonna to restart the fourth, uh, the fourth test um, uh, based on the, uh, the nearest non-failing change. Uh, which is now uh, the, no the second Nova patch. So in this case, now we have a sequence of, of these and we'll start running tests on, uh, on, on this, uh, this fourth Nova change. Um, so in this case, uh, the first one passes and so we'll land that. Uh, the second one passes and so we'll land that. 
Um, the keystone change failed. It was terrible. Uh, so we throw it away um, and, uh, and give the feedback to the developers. And then the fourth change uh, passed, actually, once we removed that keystone change from the, from the picture. And so we will now land that. Um, and this all happens uh, many, many times a day. Um, so what's that? If there, this, this does track appropriate, appropriate Git dependencies, if there's an actual Git dependency between, uh, between changes, then, then we treat them uh, appropriately as, the, as that goes. Yes? Hmm. Right. So in the so the 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 question was uh, from a Git perspective, does change four include the changes from from change one, uh, or are they combined at the end? So um, in the, as as an input thing, we're assuming for the sake of this demonstration that the developer who wrote change four was not writing it on top of change one. This is, this, these, are, these are independent changes as written by, by developers. But when we test change four in that scenario, we test it with changes one and two uh, applied to the, to the tree. So we actually take the tree, apply change one, apply change two, apply change three, apply change four. And then that's how we test four. That's correct. So we don't. We, we, we do, even though we're testing them in parallel, we're not going to, uh, we're not going to land or pass anything. A at any one given point in time, if any change fails, then we have to eject and restart all of the changes behind it. So if, if change one happened to run slowly in its tests and all of the changes behind it passed weirdly and it failed, then it gets ejected and we restart all of the tests behind it with it ejected. Then Nova Four will just get booted out real quickly. If 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 four if four attempts that that's basically a, a test failure for four. It'll it'll that just test will fail really quickly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so. Uh, so that's great. So I, I, I sort of, before telling you how to work with Stackforge, I sort of needed to tell you what you get from Stackforge. Um, so one of the, thing, the main things that you get from Stackforge is all of the work that we're doing to let people develop uh, on OpenStack at a ludicrous, ludicrous, ludicrous rate. Uh, and when I say that, I do mean that we, we, we land uh, somewhere between three and 400 patches a day fully tested in that way. Um, and uh, that's, that's kind of a large velocity. Um, so all of the tooling that you that, that you get from that is what you get if you put your if you put your project in Stackforge. Um, so it is uh, it is basically a, oh that's a terrible typo. It is an organization apparently that's a word uh, of of non official repos. So these are repos that are not blessed. You don't have to get permission. Uh, they, these aren't these don't have any status. You're kidding. God. Uh, they don't have any official status with OpenStack. They haven't gone through committee review or anything like that. Um, uh, they're just they're just repos, uh, but running in the OpenStack infrastructure systems. It's self-service, so if you decide to use this, you're mostly on your own. We'll answer questions and stuff like that, but we have 1,600 developers working on OpenStack to deal with. Uh, we we can't be writing Jenkins jobs for you, um, but we we will enable you to write them yourselves um, or to use ones that are already there. And I'll I'll point to that in just a second. Uh, and you get access to all of the advanced all of this advanced stuff that we're doing here. Uh, is basically just naturally, we don't know how to run our system without our advanced features. Uh, so you definitely get them uh, because there's another way to do it. Uh, so it's really easy to add your project. Um, it's a git commit. Um, so you clone the OpenStack uh, infrastructure's config repo, um, uh, which is at git.openstack.org slash openstack dash infra slash config. Um, and then it's always pretty much a good idea for any of the OpenStack uh, repos to first thing, once you've cloned it, to just run git review minus s in, in the directory, uh, because that will set up your Garrett remotes uh, and install some post commit hooks for you, uh, which you want. Um, so uh, that'll get you set up to add your project. There are four files that you will have to edit in that, pro in that repo to add your project to Stackforge. That's it. And they're all. Uh, all YAML, uh, three YAML files and, a, and an any file. Uh, so it's, it's pretty easy stuff to deal with. Um, the first one is uh, review.projects.yaml.erb because this is in a puppet repo. So, but ignore that. It's, it, there's nothing uh, ERB-ish that you need to know about this. Um, 
this, project, this file is the project's registry. This lists every project that we have in our system, and it drives a bunch of automation around project creation. Um, there's basically three things you need to put into an entry. You need to put the name of your project in there. It needs to start with stack forge and a slash, and then it's going to have a name. Um, so in this case, this is, this is the entry for the WISME project, which is hosted on StackForge. Um, you probably want to put in a short description of the project. This will show up on, uh, on any place that has short description uh, capabilities. Um, and then you want to tell us where to get the project from uh, if it already exists in some form. So a lot of times people will do the initial couple of commits, push it up to GitHub, and then stick in a thing for this and we'll suck it down. At that point you can ignore that, you can delete that repo. We use it one and only one time for initial import. Um, but we've got to get the code from somewhere, right? Um, so you give it a project name, description, and where you want the code to come from. Um, there, is a, uh, there is a file in the ACLs directory, uh, which amazingly enough contains the ACLs uh, for, your, for your project. I recommend for most of these things, by the way, to just cargo cult someone else's project config, copy it and change the names. Uh, but, uh, but just, you know, to walk through what it is, this is telling you in this case that the WISME core group has, uh, has code review uh, approval access on, uh, on the project and that the WISME PTL group can push tags to make releases. Um, and then the other stuff is just boilerplate, seriously, don't change it. Um, you probably just want to take this and copy it and change the name from WISME to whatever your project is called. Um, uh, the, oh no, I, I didn't change the title on this one. Uh, this is the, uh, this is the uh, projects.yaml in the Jenkins job builder. So the third one in the list here, uh, config projects.yaml. Uh, you need an entry in here to instantiate some Jenkins jobs for your project. We use a project that we wrote called Jenkins job builder, which allows us to express Jenkins jobs in YAML files and then have them splatted into the Jenkins server via the Jenkins API because it turns out that handing people administrative access to your Jenkins server so that they can edit jobs is stupid. Um, so instead, we can keep YAML files in a, in a source code repository and then code review the changes to those Jenkins jobs. Uh, and then we can sort of template it as well. Um, so we use that here. Uh, lots of other people use it. Wikipedia has picked that up. It's probably one of the most active projects in all of OpenStack, actually. Uh, it turns out this is a problem lots of people have. Um, so you need some information about here. What's the name of the project? Um, this is a really, I hate the name of this next field, the GitHub org field. God, that's terrible. I'm going to run over by like a minute or two. Um, uh, GitHub org, uh, in this case, just put StackForge. Uh, what type of node you want to run these on, just leave it as precise, I promise, unless we tell you to do something different. Um, if you happen to have an RTF, uh, uh, RTFD um, project for your, uh, for your uh, in, uh, account for your project, you want to put in the ID of that so you can publish, have it trigger uh, documentation builds. Um, you just want to say, some, again, cargo cult most of this. Uh, and then these are collections of jobs. So Python jobs is a set of jobs you can have. PyPy jobs are publication jobs to publish your code onto PyPy. Uh, and then there's a, a hook job uh, that you can instantiate for your, for your project to, uh, to trigger RTFD. Um, and then you need to configure Zool to run those jobs at times. Uh, because just them existing isn't really all that meaningful if nothing ever tells them to run. Uh, in this case, there are multiple pipelines in Zool, uh, uh, and I, I uh, indicate what those are, but those, those in, these entries here, Python jobs, will get you a job called gate your name pep8, gate your name python26, gate your name python27, uh, and then you can select which ones of those you actually want to run. Um, in this case, we're going to uh, run pep8, python26, 27, and 33 uh, jobs, on, uh, on the Steve Dor project, when you upload uh, jobs, which is the check queue, wh when, when it's been approved, which is the gate queue, uh, when, it, when a change lands, we're going to build a tarball and upload it at tarballs.opensack.org. If you push a, and this is what these mean, if you push a, uh, a tag that is a pre-release tag, we will, we will run the pre-release uh, jobs. And if you uh, push a release tag, we will do release tagging. Uh, we'll do actual uh, code release things. That's a description of those. Um, we, uh, and once you've added all that to the repo, uh, you need to submit it up for code review. Give us a couple minutes because uh, there's four of us uh, and we need to review this for, for, for syntax correction. We're not approving whether or not your project is good enough to go in. It's purely a, a technical review. Um, quick note about the tag releasing. We use tag-based releasing in OpenStack and you can too. 
uh, when your project is in Stackforge, which means that rather than doing a whole bunch of I'm going to upgrade, I'm going to update the version in this file and then make a commit and then do another commit to indicate that it's a pre-release of the next version or whatever, uh, we actually just drive all that directly off of Git tags. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can ask me about uh, on the online. Uh, you can also, and this is the last thing I'll say because I'm running over time, um, I was mentioning all the stuff about the DevStack gate earlier. Uh, because it turns out one of the things that's really hard to do is test your project against OpenStack. Um, but we spin up about 10,000 OpenStack clouds a day. We have really good automation for doing it. Um, so we've put in hooks so you can take our, our DevStack based OpenStack testing jobs and add some hooks in to install your project into the same environment. And then you've got an OpenStack with your thing running on it. And then you can test against, against the trunk of OpenStack uh, for on every commit of your, uh, of your project. And this is an example of uh, the uh, requirements integration job, which uh, makes use of that machinery. All of these are in the repo. You can go look at them and find them and copy them for things later. Uh, also, I lied. Uh, uh, there's. Uh, I just wanted to point out that as much as Python, uh, as much as we are a Python shop, uh, we are an equal opportunity infrastructure system. So we do have uh, support for uh, for Java in there. Um, we're probably not going to let your Java project into OpenStack itself, but it turns out there's a bunch of different Java projects that we do need to support. So we have not only support for, for general Java jobs building, um, but we can also do the same tag-based releasing to Maven repositories uh, if that's a thing that's important to you. Um, and if you happen to have extra special needs because you're adding your project and it has weird testing things, we have a third-party testing interface so that you can hook up your own Jenkins servers or your own to build farms and have those report back into the code review system on, on every commit. Uh, and we've got documentation about that uh, here. Uh, and that is, I'm a little bit over time. Uh, the, the, these slides, they're not available right now because I haven't, I haven't approved them in Garrett yet. Um, but uh, uh, they, they will be available um, linked from docs.opensac.org slash infra slash publications. Um, actually, that's backwards. It's docs.opensac.org slash publications slash in no, no, that's right. That's right. Uh, sorry, it seemed backwards. Uh, and I'll also be sending them into the, into the, the link to the conference uh, so that they'll be, they'll be linked to from there. Uh, and that's, I'm, I'm decently over time, it turns out. Uh, so I think that's, I have to go. Uh, thank you. <laughs> We need to ask questions about that. What's the best place to? Uh... Oh, just uh, oh. So if if you if you ever have any questions about this, we're always on Freenode IRC in hash OpenStack dash infra. Uh, there's also a mailing list OpenStack dash infra at lists.openstack.org, uh, or you know you can find me or something like that. But those are really the two best places to find help with any of this. Thank you very much. I'm always impressed by how many details you can uh, compress in uh, 30 minutes. <laughs>